thou favor me, you wouldn't let Y'all come on in for a minute. Come right on in. God bless you, everybody. Y'all come on in tonight. We're in a, a strange place. <laughs> We're in the garage. <laughs> Being a little creative tonight. Y'all come on in. Y'all come on in tonight, everybody. I'm going to give you a few moments to get in, grab your family, grab your friends, grab all of your loved ones. And, uh, Get some people to come in tonight. Um, we're going to uh, oh, just come on. Get your loved ones. Like and share. Tag as many people as you can. Tag, like, share. Hope we look okay. But tag, like, and share. Yeah. Tag, like, and share as many people as you can tonight. We got a good talk we're going to have tonight. So y'all get, get some people in the line tonight. Hey, Tony, I see you made it. I see you made it. Good evening to everybody. Y'all come on in. Say hello to everybody. Just taking care of checking all of our all of our networks to check Facebook and check um, check um, YouTube to make sure we trying to make sure we all in here tonight. Want to just play some music tonight as we get ready to start tonight. Some good praise music. That's, um, um, some good news. We hope you uh, enjoy the presence of the Lord. And every now and then, you know, I play some good old school, old school gospel music um, to get us started. But I want y'all to really get some people involved in the call tonight. Call them, get them involved. I'm gonna give y'all a minute. Get them in here. Get some music playing. Oh, 
I'm tagging friends and family. I see I'm just tagging a couple of people. I want you all to please like and share. Get as many people as you can to come in with you tonight. I promise you we won't be long, but I want to share something with you on tonight that I pray would be a blessing to you and yours. All right? So please like, share, and... Um, Let's get into this word tonight. Let's get into that breathe, feel good. All right, let's like, share, and uh, bring your family and your friends in tonight. As many people as you can, get them in the room tonight and let's share. Let's share with them tonight. All right, God bless all of you. I pray that you had a great day today. And I pray that you've enjoyed yourself today. It's beautiful here. In the state of Mississippi, it is absolutely gorgeous. We're in the high 80s, almost 90 degrees today. I think we were up to 87 today. And so thank God for all of you that joined us on today. We want to start tonight with a uh, word of prayer before we get started um, tonight. Most certainly, I'm glad you all decided to come in and join us tonight. What a blessing yes. is to have all of you all with us on tonight. Hey, would you pray? before we start yes. yes hello everyone first of all i want to say hello to everybody i had a blessed day today and i pray that you have had one i'm so excited about the word on tonight because i know the lord has a word for each one of us on tonight so don't forget to get your family members get your friends call someone call your loved ones and tell them to get online because god has a word for us tonight let's pray father god in the name of jesus god we thank you lord god for one more time to come together lord god god we thank you lord god we have our ears open lord god to hear what you're saying to us on tonight god i ask you to bless each and every one lord god that's online i ask you to bless everyone that's on social media tonight lord god lord god they came lord god for a word on tonight and god i thank you right now in the name of jesus God, we thank you, Lord God. We love you, Lord God. God, we know that it's you, Lord God, that keeps us day after day after day. And your mercies, God, we say thank you right now in the name of Jesus. God, I ask you to continue, Lord God, to lead and guide us, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus. God, if we've done anything that was wrong, Lord God, that was not like you, Lord God, we ask you to forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us for all of our sins. God, we repent right now in the name of Jesus for everything, God. And we thank you because you are a forgiving God. And we love you and we magnify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. And thank you again for joining us on tonight. Deacon Williams, I saw you on tonight. And some of the others that are coming on tonight, God bless you, Mother Johnson. And just to uh, Brother Tony to all of you that are sharing tonight i would that you would please do yourself a favor and call your friends call your loved ones gather your family around whatever object that you have gather them around tonight for a word from the lord tonight i want to share something with you tonight our church is in the midst of a fast and we're fasting and it's not something that we just good evening aunt Tanti. god bless you good to see you tonight um we're we're fasting and it's not something that we just talk about but i wanted to take time and, and just kind of teach about it for a moment tonight and to share with you the sentiments of our heart our convictions toward fasting and praying and what that really means and what that really looks like and uh 
what did the Lord say about fasting and praying? What, what does he say about it? And so for those of you who would like to join us in our fast every day from 12 to 3 o'clock, you can join us. Those of you that would like to join us at um, Church of the Harvest every Sunday at 9 a.m. Uh, I think uh, Johnson has a flyer she can put up. You can tag it to any of your pages every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can most certainly join us at Church of the Harvest there in Flint, Michigan at 2202 Dark Mouth Street. Dark Mouth Street in Flint, Michigan. You can join us every Sunday there at 9 a.m. And also you can join us here at a New Home Ministries um, every Sunday at 3 p.m every Sunday at 3 p.m. here in Jackson, Mississippi. You're more than welcome to join us every Sunday, 3 p.m. Jackson, Mississippi. Man, what a wonderful time that we have here. Every week you can join us yes, at the 3 p.m. hour for our service here in uh, Jackson. I thought I sent you some new new, some new some graphics. That's, yeah, that's one that's an old graphic, but thank you for that, Mother Johnson. Um, you can do that service every Sunday at 3 p.m. And then most certainly on Tuesday nights, you can join us for Tuesday night teaching Bible studies every Tuesday night uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time and at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're not following us on at NR Ministries, you can most certainly follow us at NR Ministries on Facebook or you can follow us at uh, Church of the Harvest or New Home ministries all of those platforms are available for you if you've not subscribed to our youtube channel please go to official neil roberson and subscribe to our our, our youtube channel and uh, most certainly go and subscribe there tonight i want to talk about something i want to go to the word of the lord tonight and i want something for you hearing tonight it's in mark chapter 9 mark chapter 9 Mark chapter 9, and I'm reading from that verse. Uh, let me make sure I get this right. Mark chapter 9, and from verse 14 to verse 29. I'm not going to read all of it. Mark chapter 9, verse 14 as well. I'll start reading it tonight. Mark chapter 9, and verses 14. We're talking about the power of fasting and praying. Mark chapter 9, start reading at verse number 14. And I'll read a few of the following verses and then I'll, um, I'll stop reading and, uh, in that area. So Mark chapter 9 verse 14, it says this, And when it came, and when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them. He says, And the scribes questioning with him, uh, questioning with them, I'm sorry. Verse 15 says, And straightway, all the people, when they beheld him, were straightly amazed and running to him, saluted him. Uh, and he asked the scribes, what question ye have were ye with them? And one of the multitude answered saying, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. It says, and wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. In verse 19, he says, he answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Verse 20 says, and they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and, and wallowed, foaming. 21 says, they asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he says, of a child. Look at, listen, look at what verse 22 says. He says, and often, it, it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Verse 23 says, Jesus said 
unto him. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Keep listening, y'all. Verse 24. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. He says, I believe, but I, gotta, I, I still have a level of, of unbelief. I need you to help me in that area. 25 says, and when Jesus saw that the people came running together, uh, he rebuked the vile spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. Verse 22, verse 26 says, and the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead in so much that many said he is dead. Look at verse 27. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. Verse 28 says, and when he was come into the house of the disciples, asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? Here it is, verse 29. And he said unto them, this kind can come forth not by nothing, but by prayer and fasting. Let me read it for you again, verse 29. He says, and he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing, but by prayer and fasting. I, I want to talk to you about this tonight because I think it's really important that as we enter into this conversation together, that we dialogue the fact that there are certain things, a certain things that happens, these things that happen in our lives are detrimental in our lives. There's, we, we are, we, 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 we're outside, you know people to ride past and yeah. stuff. But I want to tell you because there are certain things that cannot and will not come out. There are certain things that will not release. There are certain things that will not get off of us. There are certain things that will not let us go. There are certain demonic forces that will not loose you unless you take those extra measures to make sure those things are away or gone. You gotta understand that the devil ain't playing with you. And the enemy seeks to, uh, to devour us. The enemy seeks to destroy us. The enemy seeks to, to do damage to us. The, the enemy seeks to to just, the, Jesus asked the enemy one day, what was he doing? He says, I'm going to and fro seeking whom I may devour. I'm looking for people to, to destroy. I'm looking for people to conquer. I'm looking for people to make them miss their mark, to unfocus them. He says, I'm looking for people that would not be genuinely focused on the things of God, to make them miss out on what God really has for them. And you have to really be careful because most of us miss God because we're so out of focus. We, we, we just focus on something else. We let other things get our attention. I mean, I'm talking about family, children, marriage, money, health, sickness, people, things that frustrate us and causes us to miss what God really has for us. And tonight, we, we wanted to take a few moments and just talk with you about how do I deal with certain things in my life? You know, years ago, years ago, if you remember, honey, I had a, a really, really, when I first got saved, I had a really, really bad drug addiction before I got saved. I, now, all of this was taken care of before I got saved. Well, after I got saved. And I had an addiction with cocaine. And 
and all kinds of things when I got saved. And I really wanted to be free from it. And so I got saved. I never forget. I was on 25th and North Avenue outside at a park and the preach word went forth. And man, I tell you something, I wanted to be free so bad. My brother Joe, he was saved. He had been saved for a long time. Joe got saved before mm -hmm. me and Mike. Yes. A long time. Joe was always a good guy. Mm -hmm. Well, he wasn't good as he, <laughs> he wasn't good as he pretended well, yeah. to be. But he was, <laughs> but he was a good guy. He was a good yeah. guy. And he was a wonderful guy. And but he was a quiet guy. Mm -hmm. And so, and so Bishop, my brother Bishop Johnson is on tonight. Bless you, Bishop. And so he was a really quiet guy. So, but me and my brother Michael, we were kind of obnoxious. <laughs> we were kind of obnoxious with our sin. Our sin was kind of like, yeah. <laughs> And uh, so I wanted to be free, man. I wanted to be free so bad, I did, you know. And I said, man, I got to get free from this addiction. I get get free from these drugs, man. I, I don't want to do this. So I never forget, you know, I, I made a promise to God I wouldn't touch it anymore. And, I, and the night after I got saved, the very next day, I went out and tried to get high again after I got saved the next day. And I never forget what the preacher said to me that night when he prayed for me. He says, when I lay hands on you, uh, Joe said I was real good. I was almost saved from my mother's room. Yeah, from your mother's room, right, from the room. <laughs> And not he's, wound. And he's almost. <laughs> right, right, right. Almost. Right. <laughs> and so I, he, uh, his name was Pastor David Lucky. And he laid his hands on me and said, after I lay my hands on you, nothing you will ever do will be the same again. And when a real prophet, when a real man of God lays his hands on you and speak prophetically over your life like that, trust me, things are going to change. I'm not talking about these little knock, 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 knock preachers now. I ain't talking about these little mm -hmm. uh, Facebook in, in, yeah. in YouTube preachers yeah. that be saying a bunch of stuff online that sound, you know, mm -mm. I'm talking about one of them in your face preachers got the Holy Ghost for real. Mm -hmm. He laid his hands on me, told me nothing I'll ever do be the same again. And he laid his hands on me. And when I tried to do it the next day, I immediately got pneumonia. Immediately. But even, even that, that was, uh, yeah, he was a praying man, uh, but even that wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. It was only after I, now give me, now, now listen, listen now, I never went back to get high again, but I struggled with it in my heart. You know, and your flesh has a desire. Whoever you feed the most is the one that becomes victorious. Whoever you feed the most become victorious. You got to remember that. Whoever right. you feed the most is who will have victory in your life. Makes sense. And, yeah. and, um, I began to read the word and the word began to share with me that, that there's some things mm -hmm. that you will not, you will not and cannot get delivered from until you enter into a place of prayer and fasting. And that's a place of shedding your flesh down, turning the plate down. Because listen at me, it is your flesh that desires those worldly things. It's not your spirit, man. It's your flesh. And flesh has an appetite. And if you don't shut down your flesh, you got to make your flesh suffer. When your flesh show out, you got to say, I'm not going to feed you. Yeah. And let me tell you something. When you get to a place and you don't give your flesh what your flesh wants, your flesh will whine and cry and ache and hurt. When you start to give your flesh, when you start to not give your flesh what your flesh wants, your flesh will retaliate against you. And what they call them today is withdrawals. It's not no withdrawal. That's your flesh showing up because your flesh desires to have what your flesh wants. Yeah, yeah. So you have to cast down those things. They're the high thing that exalts itself. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. All those things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity. You know, we're not in a fleshly fight, a fleshly war. We're in a spiritual fight. So we understand we, we're not warring after the flesh. We're warring after the spirit. So you have to be able to, to be able to put on the whole arm of God to be able to stand against the wild of the devil. But even putting on the arm of God, you got to fast and pray. And praying, praying and fasting is more than just a notion. Our church is on a, a time of prayer and fasting here in Jackson, Mississippi, and in Michigan. 
And uh, some of the people in Mississippi are new converts, are new believers. Some have not walked this way like we walk. So I just can't start out by saying we fashion all day. Because guess what? Somebody ain't going to do the fast. Somebody going to cheat and they're going to miss the whole concept of fasting, the understanding of that. So I thought that tonight I would take the time to begin to teach tonight on the power of of, of, of praying and, and fasting. There was a man by the name of Thomas Aquinas. He was a Roman Catholic scholar who lived between the time of 1225 and 1274 AD. And he was a brilliant, a very brilliant thinker who left an indelible imprint on the fabric of his time, the time that he lived. He, um, his visit to the Vatican there in Italy, Rome, uh, the Pope is said to have looked at Thomas and said to him, he said, behold, and I wrote this down because I wanted to be clear on what he said. He said, behold, Master Thomas, he said, the church can no longer say, as Peter said, silver and gold have I none. You remember that in, in the Acts chapter three, when the man was at the gate called Beautiful and he said to him, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. He said the church can no longer say that. So Aquinas was quick to reply. He says, Alice, he called him master. He says, uh, neither can we say what followed that, which was um, such as I have give out to thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He said, the church can't say that either. And Thomas understood a truth. And the truth was, Joe, that many people never grasp. They never grasp the fact the measure the real measure of success for a church or for a ministry is not how fine its building is. It ain't about the, 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 the fabric of your building, the building, or how large the offerings are, or how great the crowds are in service, how big the congregants are that are gathering. That's not it. We're living in a day of ministerial success, and people are celebrating the successes of their age. Uh, how many folk you had today, Doc? Uh, uh, how many, man, our offering was an all-time high today, Doc. <laughs> doc, how many you take in, Doc? Man, you took in 20 today. Yeah. What you said, Doc? Mm -hmm. I have a scene online where a preacher was, um, as he got through preaching and he did his reel, he counted the people that joined one, two. And, he, and, and although that's, I'm not knocking anybody, and although that's wonderful, but I'm telling you, this is the culture in the age that we moved to until we're more concerned about how many joined and how much money was raised and how beautiful the building is. And I, and hey, I like, don't get me wrong. I like these things too. I want these things too. But lest we should forget that we're living in that age that every church wants to be the largest, every church wants to be the richest, the most influential, et cetera. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Success. Uh, in these days are measured in millions and of dollars, uh, tens of thousands of attendees worldwide, fame and attention. Who's the most famous? Who's, who's getting booked the most? Who's, you know, who's, who's, uh, who's trending today? Who's, uh, this preacher is the most trendiest. He's uh, the new prophet. He's the greatest of all. You know, uh, and in this passage of scripture today, listen to me. The Lord Jesus teaches us about the most important, this let me, ingredients of a successful ministry. Now I need you to call your friends, tag in and come in because tonight I wanna to help you tonight. I wanna to help you as I've helped myself looking at this. And the disciples in this particular text lacked the ingredients and they failed miserably in the area that they needed the most. I read for you hearing tonight and we're told that in verse number 18, in verse 18, in verse 18, she put that on the screen. Verse 18, we're told that of this text, that the disciples of Jesus failed in their attempt to cast out a demon from a little boy. They failed. If you read the text, they failed to cast out a demon from a little boy. And the boy's father summed up their efforts by saying they could not do it. If you look at the text, if you look at the scripture, the father says, I brought my boy to your disciples and they could not help. Mm -hmm. Tell me something tonight. What do you do 
when you brought your problem to the place where problems are supposed to be solved, what do you do when you bring your problems to the place where the Lord has the victory? And we've talked about he reigns, he reigns, and he's the greatest, he's the healer, and he's the most. What do you do when you take it to that place that people preached about? And when you get there, the people inside can do no harm, can do no help. They can't help you. What do you do when you bring your child to church and you got a demon in them or, 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 or a lesbian spirit or a demonic homosexuality spirit or a Jezebel spirit? And y'all think Jezebel spirit got to do with makeup and, and, and pants and and fingernails, it ain't got nothing to do with no Jezebel. A Jezebel spirit can be in a man. A Jezebel spirit is that person who groups up and got a click and they move when he moves and move when she moves and, and clap when she clap and yes. move. It's a dominating spirit. It is a spirit of witchcraft. It is a spirit, a controlling spirit. And we don't know what that means. We think it's got to do with some fingernails and a dress ain't long enough in your hair and the weave. Uh, they ain't got to do that. That's a demonic spirit, a person. And guess what? We think Jezebel is the person who don't attend. But sometimes a Jezebel is the most faithful person at church. They're the most faithful. They're they tithers and givers and always there. They're the most influential people. They got their own congregation inside of the congregation. Y'all ain't going to say nothing, but I'm going to talk anyway tonight. We don't understand what this really looks like and what this really means. So what do you do when you bring your child who is failing who is who is the society is destroying your child what do you do when you bring your child and bring your family member you bring your marriage to church what do you do when you bring your daughter to church to get help only to find out that your daughter is being molested by somebody in church what do you do when you bring your son in church and he's a little feminine and find out that the priest is now raping your son y'all ain't gonna talk to me what do you do when you bring your marriage to church and find out that the deacon or the preacher or the musician is sleeping with your wife and is supposed to be getting help for. What do you do when you come to church in the place that you thought was a safety zone ended up being the place of violation, the place of pollution? And the passive scripture says that these men could not help that father. The sad truth is God has a very different standard for determining what constitutes a successful ministry. Let's talk tonight. I'm not gonna be long. You need to pull up a chair and come quick with me tonight. In this passage, the Lord Jesus teaches us about the most important ingredients of a successful ministry. Here's what he says. He said the disciples lacked that ingredient and they failed miserably. And we're told in verse 18 in that particular text that the disciples failed in their attempt cast that demon out of that boy and it summed up to the total that they could not do it. And he was right because here it is. He came to these men hoping to find some solution or resolve to help his family. But he found these men had no help to offer. They tried. They tried. But they were no different than the seven sons of Sceva. Who says he wanted to cast out a demon in the name of the man that Paul used? Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. demon says, uh, Paul I know and Jesus I know, but who is you? And commenced to beat their clothes off of them. And it's the danger. Some of us think that that, that, that violent spirit no longer uh, lives. But some of us are going to end up in church and that spirit is going to jump out and whoop your clothes off you because you think it's a joke. You think it's a game. They failed because they lacked spiritual power. There it is. They lacked spiritual power. Let's talk about that tonight. Let's talk about that power tonight. Let's, let's talk about spiritual power. They lacked spiritual power because they were missing the one ingredient that assures spiritual power. What is the ingredient that assures or guarantees spiritual power? I want you, just for a few more minutes tonight, to look at these verses today because, uh, baby, you got to understand that, that we're living in an age that we need this mess to teach us how to have this power. Trying to carry out the Lord's business. When the Lord Jesus tells the disciples 
Before he leave, he says to occupy till I come. He says, take care of business till I get back. He says, occupy. How can you occupy when you don't know how to do the business to occupy? How can you occupy without the authority of the Holy Ghost that he left for us in the earth to be with us, to live in us, to operate through us when you lack the power to do it? I want you to look at these verses today because we need the message to be taught to us. We need to be trying to carry out the Lord's business in these dark, sinful days, these ages, this age, too many times. I don't care if the culture is different. The power ain't no different. You need power to deal with these things. So I, I, I realize some of the things that our children, they go to school, contend with that. We didn't contend with it, but they're contending right. with it. They're dealing right. with it. We're trying to carry out the Lord's business, but in a sinful age, listen at this, people walk away from churches saying, and they could not do it. Mm -hmm. People come to church and walk away every Sunday saying, yes. well, yes. they shouting, but ain't nothing changing. And sometimes I hate to look at Facebook. Sometimes I hate to look at social media because everybody dancing. That's all they're doing on Facebook, dancing. Everybody, and I ain't hating on nobody because I <laughs> like to dance. Yes, We're doing a lot of dancing on Facebook. Ain't nobody getting healed. Ain't nobody getting delivered. It's just scandal after scandal after scandal after scandal. Is God pleased? They couldn't do it. Our problem is the same as that the Lord's disciple often. We lack the necessary ingredients required for spiritual success. Scoot up. Let's talk. See, by God's help, I wanted to unpack these verses. And I'm not going to have time, but I can uh, unpack one or two tonight. Just one point I want to talk about. The phrase that the Father uses to sum up the ability of the disciples when he said, and they could not. Listen at this. And I want to point out the lack of spiritual power. The Lord of spiritual power and then the lessons of spiritual power. This is the three things I said. Number one, I want to deal with uh, uh, the lack of spiritual power. That's number one, the lack of spiritual power. Number two, the, the Lord of spiritual power. Then number three, the lessons of spiritual power. Let me try that again. Mother, put that on the board for me. Listen to me again. Number one, the lack of spiritual power. The lack. Number two, we're going to deal with the Lord of spiritual power. I'm not going to be able to unpack all this tonight. I'm not going to be able to do it all tonight, but I, I got to try it tonight. I'm going to do the lack of spiritual power. So the lack of spiritual power, the Lord of spiritual power, and then there is the lessons of spiritual power. The lack, the Lord, the lesson. <laughs> the lack, the Lord, the lesson. And I really want you to get this tonight. I, I really want you to get this tonight because the Lord the Lord of spiritual power. Let, let's deal with, first of all, the lack of spiritual power, the lack of spiritual power. Because understand, if, if we set the stage for these verses in verse number one through verse number 13 of these of this particular chapter, that is chapter number nine, if I'm not mistaken, Jesus had taken Peter, James, and John. Now, now let me set this for you. Let me set the, what time to keep people? Okay, I got 20 minutes. Okay, I got 20 minutes. Okay, listen to this carefully. Let me let me let me let me deal with this real quick. Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up to the mount. It's called Mount Hermon. He takes them up to Mount Hermon, and and he was transformed right before the eyes. Transformed, transfigured, transformed. The image of him changed on that particular mountain. These three disciples say, Jesus. They saw Jesus in his glory. Watch this out. Mm -hmm. They saw him in his glory. They saw Moses. They saw Elijah. And they listened to them talking to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, now, Moses and Elijah are dead already. They're, they're, they're dead. So this is pure revelation in the Lord Jesus. It's, it's privileged Peter, James, and John to see something that uh, nobody else could see. Now, now remember now, 
their 12 disciples, but Jesus had an inner circle of Peter, James, and John. He called them the sons of thunder. Now, this this free for you being there. When God gets ready to do certain things with you, you can't take everybody with you. You, you, you just can't. I, I mean, he had 12 disciples, but he couldn't take all of them with him. No, no more than no more, no more than he could take all of those men with him. Just like um, I don't care how close you are to people, some people you cannot reveal certain things to them because they cannot handle. I told somebody today that certain people cannot handle your humanity or even your spirituality. Some people cannot handle that. Mm -hmm. You can't take everybody with you. Sometimes you got to leave people behind, just like Abraham did when he took his son Isaac to be offered as a sacrifice. When he got to the foot of the mountain, the Bible says he left the lads at the foot of the mountain with the donkeys and took his son up to worship. He knew that those young men could not handle what was about to happen. And, and so Jesus takes Peter and John up to the mountain. And he's transfigured before their sight, right before them. And they saw Moses and Elijah. And they listened to them talking to Jesus about his impending death of the cross. Jesus was giving them revelation about what was to come, him dying on the cross, and he heard them talking about it. My, 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 my. They even heard the voice of God the Father as he praised Jesus, his son. And Peter got so happy until he hollered out, it's good for us to be here. <laughs> and me, hey, let's just build three tabernacles. They want to they build three churches and, and have service up there. And when he said that, God says, okay, let me shut you down, because y'all ain't even ready for what's about to happen. Some of us are not ready for what God is about to do, which is the reason why God limits us to what we can handle, because it's based on what we are ready to do. Some of us can't handle what God really wants to take us yet because we're not ready for it yet. Come on. You got to get ready for where God wants to take you. Your faith has to expand. Your faith has to be large enough. You're, you have to be able to trust God enough to move in faith. You got to be able to trust God when you cannot trace God. You got to be able to move at the voice of God. Regardless of who's around you who don't believe, you got to have the tenacity to get up and move when God say move. Glory, hallelujah. And when God say he can trust you like that, there is nothing he'll withhold from you. So the Bible says they're at the mountain of transfiguration and they've seen this conversation. They heard the voice of God speaking out of the cloud. And these men had seen the midnight sun. They must have been floating with excitement as they came down from the mountain. But when they arrived back in the valley, see, some of us are such mountain spiritual people until we just stay on the mountain. We understand the reason why God gives you a mountain experience is so you can share it back down in the valley. Not tell it all. But some of us, you speak to some people, <laughs> How you doing? Oh, 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 she, God is doing. Come on now. Still on the mountain top. Come out from up there and get back in the valley to deal with the situation. Stay so high in the mountain. Oh, 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 she it. Oh, oh. Here's a man with a demon, and you can't even cast the demon out. You all up in the mountain. Come out from up there and deal with this lion spirit. Come out from up there and deal with your toy house. Come out from up there and deal with your messed up marriage. Come out from up there and deal with your son. Come, come out of that mountain, quit all that shouting, and deal with your financial problems, your bad credit. <laughs> come on, get out of the mountain, come down here and deal with this. And the Bible says they're floating with excitement. They arrive back in the valley below, and they came face to face with a world struggling under demonic force. Glory to God. As much as I would like pastoring to be an exciting venture and, and all of that, hey, sometimes you go to church, you got to deal with the demonic powers that be. Glory to God. And as a pastor, you got to stay on your knees and dealing with these forces. And when God begin to show you stuff, you got to go, oh, no, not that. Instead of no, not that, you better deal with what God shows you. Listen at me. When Jesus and these three disciples came down from the mountain, they find the other nine disciples engaged in an argument with some scribes in verse 14. They're down there arguing. Spinning your wheels, spinning your time, argue about stuff that ain't even arguable. In the barbershop, arguing with some Muslims. In the barbershop, arguing with the 
with the Jeru Jerusalem people from the people who talk about something that we the real Jews with the ah. It seems that a distraught father had brought his demon possessed son to Jesus for healing. Jesus was going up to the mountain and when he arrived, so he asked the disciples to heal his son. My, 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 how embarrassing. Yes. He could not even cast out a demon. The scribes are mocking them. They're making fun of them. They're mocking these boys for their lack of power. Hey, what do you do when the church is, when the people around are mocking the church for not being able to do what they said they could do? What did we do? What did we do? How do we handle that? Huh? What do, what do we do <laughs> when the girl didn't get pregnant when she wasn't at church, but she got pregnant at church? How do we deal with that? What do we do? So Jesus walks on the scene and asks for an explanation in verse number 16. He says to the father, the agonizing details describe the pitiful condition of his son. Pitiful condition. And every verb that the father uses in verse 18 is in the present tense. He's talking about what's happening right now. That, Listen to what he says. The father's language describes a horrible ongoing situation of demonic torment. Look what he says. He says, it's a sad state and a sad affair. And when Jesus hears the details, he voices his own dismay over all that he just heard. He says, my son is possessed with a deaf, dumb spirit. And he says, I brought my son to your disciples. And they couldn't help him. Oh my God. What is that like to a pastor who taught his leaders or teaching his leaders? A church full of preachers dancing and hollering and running and skipping. And can't none of them even cast out a devil. Well, babe, the scripture said that the scripture said when when you was reading the scriptures talking about the seven sons of Eva, and they could they could not cast anything out or do anything because they were believing they didn't believe God for themselves. They said, "I believe in His God. I believe in call Him out in His name." But they really didn't believe. They didn't know him. They, they, didn't, they didn't know Him, and that's how a lot of, of you talking about preachers or whatever in church. You always tell us, "Get your Bible. Stop just listening and watching me. Get your Bible and read your Bible that's for right. yourself." So that you know the word for yourself, not what Bishop said. No, that's mm -hmm. no. You got to know the word for yourself. You can't live off. Bishop said this. Bishop said we can do it, but you got to know for yourself that mm -hmm. you can do it. Mm -hmm. Bishop's not gonna be standing there with you. Mm -hmm. He, you got to know that you can do it for yourself. You lay your hands on somebody, you can't say, because Bishop said, in the name of Jesus, come out. No, right. you can't do that. In the name of Bishop God. Bishop, right, you, you can't do that. Okay. You got to know Jesus for yourself. For yourself. You have to know him for yourself. And that's what I'm learning. You got to know Jesus for yourself. That's right. It ain't no in the name of Bishop God. My mom and daddy didn't go. And my mom and daddy taught me about Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, and my sir. mother. My mother told me. She told me. She said, "You want to know Jesus for yourself. You want to get to know God for yourself." Yes, sir. My dad said, "You want, boy. You want to get it, get in there and get to know God for yourself. Yes, but sir. running around behind. Mm -mm. And now they gone. I can be right there in the name of Joe Hal Jesus. Yes, yes. <laughs> in the name of Lazarus yes. Jesus. Yes, yes. Mm -mm. That do yes. not work." That thing on the time I said, Joe Robeson, I know. Yep. Eliza Robeson, I, I know. know. Jesus, I know. But who, but who in the helicopter are you? That's right. That's, and you know what? I can bring it to, to, to today. My father is in the hospital. Amen. And um, it's not looking great, but God has the last word. But I can remember when I was in Milwaukee a couple of weeks ago, and last week he was in Milwaukee, and my daddy was laying in the bed. Y'all, I'm being transparent. I'm like... I wish my husband was here mm -hmm. so that he can lay hands on my father. Then I thought about it. 
And I said, you and your mama sitting there <laughs> saying that y'all know Jesus personally for yourself. Come on. Y'all lay hands on him. Mm -hmm. Y'all pray for him. And I was like, oh, my Lord, because that's what I'm saying. You got to know Jesus for mm -hmm. yourself. You, you believe that he's a healer. You say all this stuff. But when it came to that point of my father seeing my father, yeah. that now I was I was crying, and maybe that's because I was overtaken. Yeah, yeah. Maybe because I was overtaken mm -hmm. in my flesh because that's my daddy. Yeah. And so I was like, man, Lord, I wish my husband was here. I said, oh, I wish Bishop was here so he can lay hands on my father. You know what? I didn't do all what Bishop did, but all I did was touch my father. Yeah. And I began to pray because I said, I know I know Jesus for myself. Mm -hmm. And I know he's a healer. I began to pray for my father. But I can promise you, if in the moment you can get so overtaken yeah. In, yeah. In, in, in your flesh, and because mm -hmm. I'm my humanity, that's yeah. what it is, my yeah. humanity. Yeah. And I was like, man, I wish he was here. But it's like something jumped up in me and said, hey, you say you know me? You, you pray for him. You pray for him yourself. That's right. And I said, man, that's why, you know, it says only certain things happen and stuff because of fasting and praying. Yeah. Yeah. You have to fast and pray. Listen, y'all, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I'm, I've been saved a long time. But I have not learned all that I need to know. And so this is really helping me tonight. See, the questions are, have you ever been there before? Have you ever had a time yes, Lord. when your heart was breaking yes, Lord. as your soul vented its pain yes. and cried out to God, yes. but you felt hopeless and helpless? Yes. When my brother Mike was, was, was passed away, man, my brother was standing in that room and I felt hopeless and helpless. Yes, Lord. And I would say, mother and father, Hopeless and helpless. Yes, Lord Jesus. You know, you know, again, we write it off as well. God wanted to do it, He could do it. You know, and the fact of the matter, instead of just acknowledging, acknowledging the fact that we had the lack of power, just the lack of power. Look at what Joe said. Joe said, unfortunately, there is a desire. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, that's so true. But watch this. Jesus yes. is expressing his displeasure toward everyone assembled there that particular day. Yes, he's, he's hurt. Yes. Jesus is hurt that no one seems to be able to believe enough to get rid of something so simple. My Lord Jesus. Listen, the disciples who have been with Jesus firsthand, walking with the, the, the Savior of the universe, yes. seeing the power firsthand, glory, don't have enough faith. The religious leaders didn't have faith. The priests, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the ones who killed Jesus, the preachers, the church people, the elders, the bishops, the gathered crowd lacked faith. Nobody, not the disciples, not the church people, not the crowd, nobody lacked faith. And even this brokenhearted father does not have the faith necessary to see his son delivered from this demon. He didn't have it. And Jesus sees this lack of faith and he cries out, how much longer am I going to have to put up with y'all. Listen, it was a heartbreaking moment from Jesus following, as he did immediately after the transfiguration, just after the transfiguration, he disciples just saw him in his glory. <laughs> he couldn't even cast out a, he couldn't even cast out a dumb deaf spirit. I mean, couldn't even cast out a dumb deaf spirit. He, they saw him in his glory. Couldn't even do it. Couldn't even do it. Jesus was ready to get back to his father's house. Jesus was ready to get out and go back with his father. And watch this, y'all. Watch this. I wrote this down because I want you to see this. The saddest aspect of this whole scene is not the condition of the boy, 
but the spirit of the scribes or the anguish of the father. But the saddest part of this whole account is the powerlessness of the disciples. It's the powerlessness of the people who call themselves believers. The powerless of the people who attend church every Sunday. The powerless of the people singing in the choir, playing the music. Come on now, preaching, even, even preaching. The powerlessness. These men have seen Jesus perform countless amazing miracles. Feeding yes. two fish, five loaves, feeding 5,000 men, not including women and children, casting devils out. Listen, uh, healing the one with issue of blood, stopping a funeral procession, raising a man from the dead. Listen, they saw it all. Yet, <laughs> yet, they still lack genuine faith. These men had even cast out demons in the past. If you read Mark chapter 6, verse 7, uh, verse 12 to 13, you will see that these same men have seen the miracles and they have performed the miracles themselves. But now it said to them, and they could not do it. You're going to come into a time where you're going to be able to just sit back and, uh, and uh, um, Vibe off of what I got. Yeah. Hmm. I'm praying people and demons being cast out, and you over there, you over there, over there with me, standing behind me like, like, yeah, we well, well, we worked last night. You ain't did nothing, huh? And in many ways, these nine disciples are a picture of the modern church. Yes, they are a picture of the modern church. Yep, like them. We have the reputation that we have power. Then the father came to Jesus, but the thought of the disciples could not help this boy in verse 18, but they lacked the power to make the difference. So as a result, they've lost face with the father and the crowds that are standing around and with the scribes. So who are now mocking them because of their lack of the ability to do what they said they were able to do or who Jesus bragged on them to do. So the modern church has everything it needs to exist. That much churches have nice facilities to meet in. Most churches have skilled people preaching and they know the harmonetics and hermeneutics of the word in order to rightfully divide the scripture. They've been to the cemetery, I mean the seminary. They know all those kind of things and most churches have all the money and they'll fight you over their money but they ain't got no power. Listen to me now. They'll fight you about them few dollars they got in the bank but they ain't got no power. People dying in the church spiritually and naturally. Come on now. Churches have all the people that they want, all the pews to feel that they got good jobs and need to, everything they done around the church, they can get it done. Most churches lack what the most of all they need and that is the power of God. Did you not know we're living in an age where we need the power of God? This building here besides this highway is making a promise. Nothing is happening. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. But I dare to have another church. I don't want New Home Ministries Jackson to just be another church where we just jumping and shouting. I want people to be healed, delivered, and set free. I don't want Church of the Harvest to be another church. I want people to be healed, delivered, and set free. I don't care about how many people in there. As long as the people, they got power. If you got power and you can show demonstration of God's power, people will come. Let me tell you something. Wherever there's a fire, people will come and watch it burn. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You need God, you can have God. Huh? I'm closing with this. This church makes a promise to the world that we're different than others are, that we're able to help, that we're able to make a difference. Our sign says that Calvary, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that the church, we say all these things. And the word Calvary means the place of the skull. We represent the place that Jesus died and saved the sinner. Yes, we do. We represent the cross and the blood of Jesus. We represent the power of God to save souls, to secure eternity for the life, the change of people. Yes, we do. We represent the Christ who died on the cross to set the people free from the sins and bondage that gives them new life. We represent the baptism of the Holy Ghost, huh? The ability to change the lives of people, to endow them or endue them with this power that Jesus left in the earth for us. We represent the church, the ecclesia, the Greek word ecclesia, the called out one, the called out to assemble ourselves together. The word tells the world that we have been called to assemble ourselves 
to make the difference in the lives of people. And saints, as I close tonight, I want you to know that we must not be like the average church. That's a pretty building. For those of you that are watching tonight, I'm not talking just to New Home. I'm not just talking to Church of Harvest. I'm talking to you because the brick and mortar is not the church. The church is you and I. Our bodies are the temple of God. Yes. And if you're going to have this kind of power, this kind, when it comes out by prayer and fasting, I want to pick this up again next week as we continue yes. to talk about the Lord of spiritual power. Yes. Today we dealt with the fact, um, and we want to, I really want to take time to deal with the fact that the, the lack of spiritual power. Today we talked about the lack of spiritual power. But next week I want to talk about the Lord of of spiritual, spiritual power. power. Make yes. sure you connect next week as we talk about the Lord of spiritual, spiritual power. power. Y'all got to hear me now yes. because you cannot have this spiritual power. You cannot have this spiritual power without being connected to the Lord of this spiritual power. You got to be connected to the Lord of the spiritual power. Are y'all hearing me? Yes, the Lord of the spiritual power. You cannot operate in this power without not without knowing the one who, who I'm sorry, y'all buzz a buzz flew on we outside. It's, it's time to it's time to uh, it's, 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 you know my wife ain't no good she can't handle nothing. That's a big one. That's the, 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 she can't handle my wife she can't handle the buzz. We down south. Okay, step on it. Okay. We down south, y'all. And so you know you got the little <laughs> Y'all excuse. They good, no good. They good, can't have it. Y'all excuse me, uh -uh. The buzz came out down. Yeah, the lights out. You know what we got. Hey, Ted, you cracking up. Hey, Ted, these, these bugs are running out. These trees and stuff, my uh -uh, no. <laughs> Jerry, she can't have it, Jerry. Look at Jerry. They want it. But, uh, Jerry you know. They want to be saved. Yeah, them bugs want to be saved tonight, but, uh. Lord they want to come on and get, get connected to the true vine tonight. <laughs> Listen, I am um, oh, I am so serious tonight, y'all. I know you would have. But she said I would have ran <laughs> because y'all ain't no good, y'all. Y'all need to be saved. Y'all scared of y'all scared of the bugs and things. But but anyway, y'all not gonna unfocus me tonight. Right. I don't care what y'all say. I want to deal with that tonight because I, I know it's imperative important that you understand that we must know the God who is able to give us this power that we so desperately need. And y'all know we need this power bad, man. We need this power. We need this power. I'm talking about we need this power bad. Make sure none of your you know, things hooked up to, uh, huh? make sure your things are hooked up to. Uh, um, yeah. So I, I wanted to make sure that you guys get this tonight. Did that bug kind of threw us off tonight? It did. That bug kind of threw us off tonight. But um, anyway, it's important that you understand how important it is for us to really be connected to this this power. I'm so serious, y'all. You ain't gonna cast out no demons. You ain't gonna heal nobody. You ain't gonna deliver nobody if you don't get this power. And it only comes out by prayer and fasting. Some of the things that our families deal with, some of the things that our families, our people deal with, I'm talking about it's some of the things that our family did deal with, it, it has to, you've got to deal with it, man. And the only way to deal with it is to truly, listen at me now, is to truly face those things. You got to face them. And, 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 and prayer and prayer and fasting and getting before God and calling on the name of Jesus. Turn that plate down. You eat too much anyway. Let's tell the truth. Shame the devil. Eat too much anyway. You got to make sure that you, you. I'm talking about. There's certain things, man. You got to turn that plate down, put that food back up, and say, Lord, I just. And I'm telling you right now, what happens to us is, we love we love sandwiches and and eating and, and good. My wife told me we went to, we went to the grocery store the other day, and um, and we went to Sam Club Sunday, and man, we bought some stuff, some good stuff. My wife said that she was asleep and, 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 and said she woke up and said to herself, ooh, we got some good stuff in the refrigerator to eat. 
That's just that. Now we we just been. She said, "I know I was being fat when I said that." I said, "You sure was." And we have to understand that it's going to take discipline on our part if we really want to see God work for us. You really want to see God work on your work for you. You know, you've got to really, 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 really turn that plate down, man. Get rid of that stuff, man, and just get before God, fasting and praying. And, and you know, God will help you through it. He'll give you the necessary power that you need so that you can help somebody. I'm telling you, man, this is what we have to do if we really want to see the difference. We want to see a difference in our lives. It's, it's by praying, Pastor. Let me just go on and say this to you tonight. I love you guys, and I thank you for joining us uh, on tonight. I want to pray with you tonight that I want to pray with you tonight that you would begin to really trust God in a way that you've never trusted him before. Join the fast with us, and, you know, start out like we've started out, you know, three day, three hours a day. It's not, um, it's not, it's, it ain't got nothing to do with how much you, how much you, how much you do, turn it on, tiny, turn it on, you know, it has nothing to do with how much you, um, what you do and how much you don't eat and how much food. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Consecrating is consecrating yourself. Yes. You consecrate yourself before God. You turn that plate down. Consecrate yourself. Turn that plate down and believe God. Yes, turn it down. Yes, sir. And that time you turn that plate down, you spend time in the Word, yes. reading the Word. Spend time reading God's words and just put that time, set that time aside. If you turn your Bluetooth off, turn it on. It's on. Spend that time really, just spend that time with God. Find the scriptures to read, find the word to read, read the word. And another thing you don't do, you ain't gotta, you know, read 5,000 scriptures, make sure you put on it. Make sure you, you ain't got to read 5,000 scriptures, but get you a scripture and, and meditate on that word. Get you a scripture and meditate on that word. I'm telling you, get you a scripture and meditate on that word. And when you meditate on that word, really consecrate yourself, meditate on that word. And I'm telling you what God will do. God will give you what you need. He'll give you what you need. And those things that you just have a major issue with, God will give you and teach you what you need to do in order for you to have what you need. I'm telling you. But it only comes by fasting and praying. It only comes through by fasting and it comes through by prayer. That means, that's right. Get the scriptures. Pray. Get before God. Tell God what you want. Yes, sir. And focus in on that. So you got a child that, that's really just really just out the way, can't deal with him. Yes, you got some issues in your home that's, that's, I'm telling you, man, fasting and praying will help you with those issues. It'll help you. But you've got to consecrate yourself for that. And I'm just happy. You ain't just feeling, you just live like hell all week long and then it's going to fall up in church on Sunday and cast out some devils and, huh? You just came outside arguing and fussing and cussing with your spouse and going off. Ain't nothing gonna happen. Ain't nothing gonna happen. You gotta put yourself in the right position where God can use you, where God can trust you. And whatever thing you pray for, God will make it happen. That's my praying and fasting. Turn that plate down. Fasting ain't just no way to lose weight. You, you'll lose weight, but you ain't doing no fast. If I'm going on a fast, I'm losing 40 pounds. That's the wrong motive for fasting. You're not fasting for that. Fasting for authority and power to deal with the situation. Jesus told the disciples, he said, why couldn't we cast that out like you did? And Jesus said, because this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. You can't get that out of them. You can't shout that out. Touch that and shout it out. When you get through shouting, that demon will still be at your house. It is prayer and fasting that will pull you out of that place. It is
is prayer and fasting that will help you in that situation. You can pray, consecrate yourself, fast, and God will give you strength. Man, I can't preach like I, I, I just can't get a word from God. Get on your face before God, turn that plate down, and God will give you a word. God will give you so much word. God will give you so much revelation and tell it to be incredible. You won't be able to house it all. God will give you the strength. God will give you revelation all while you sleep. You just are all in your dreams. Hallelujah. Because this kind comes out by prayer and fasting. I've learned everything that I ever needed God to do for me. If I fasted and prayed about it, God will reveal it. God will reveal people to me. Everything my children have ever done is out of place. If I fast and pray, God will tell me exactly what they was doing. People are like, Mom, you told Dad. Somebody told Dad. And my kids got to the point, they were like, man, don't go around Dad. And they were saying, don't go around Dad. Daddy going to know. The members of the church, baby, all right, don't go around Bishop. Bishop going to tell you, now Bishop going to know. Now, ain't that I think I'm so smart, I'm such a genius, no. But I have a covenant relationship with the Father. And my covenant relationship with the Father gives me revelation. And God, when the, the Bible says God will not reveal anything except be revealed it to his prophet first. And that's how God works. How have I made it this far? Trusting, leaning, and depending on Jesus. That's what God does. Father, I thank you tonight. Y'all excuse me for a minute. Yeah, I found y'all excuse me for me. I was praying tonight. And that, and that bug came back now. He going to have his funeral tonight, but I didn't kill him. Father, I thank you tonight for this time of sharing. I thank you for the opportunity to bless your name tonight. I love you tonight. I thank you so much, God, just for the opportunity to pray and to trust you and to lead your people to a closer walk with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless us like you've never blessed us before. Give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding concerning fasting and praying. Help us to have the right motives in prayer and fasting. And even, God, as we study this word, God, as we've been in this word, I pray that people, as they exit the line tonight, that they would not just write this off, but they would continue to follow and study the word tonight in the name of Jesus. Draw us nearer to closer to you. Give us a closer walk with you. As only you can. In the name of Jesus. I come against every hindering spirit. I rebuke every demonic force, every witchcraft, every Jezebel spirit. Anything that comes, I come against it tonight. In the name of Jesus. I pray for the sick that they will recover. I pray for those that are demon possessed that they will be released tonight. In the name of Jesus only you can do. We trust you for it. We believe you. We've seen you do it before. We know you can do it again. In the name of Jesus. Help us, God. Help us. Help us, Lord Jesus. In your name. We give you praise for it. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Listen, if you're not saved, if you've never invited Jesus into your life, if you've never had him as Lord of your life, tonight is a good night to do it. Man, don't wait till tomorrow. Do it today. Yes. Bible says in Romans chapter 10, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus. If you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. The mouth confessions made with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You want to be saved, you can be saved tonight. You don't have to wait. I don't care what people said, you gotta fall out, spit up, fall into my finger, do none of that. According to the scripture, you gotta confess it, believe it, and receive it. I know other cultures and other dispensations that we've done things different. I was growing up, we tarried at the altar. That was doing that dispensation. We don't do that now. We got to do it then, but we did it because that was that culture at that time. People didn't dress like we dressed. They dressed differently. Well, we're in another culture now. We're in a different age now. People don't dress like that anymore. And it takes nothing from them. They're still saved. They can still be saved. With the way they dress. Okay, they got an earring in there. Okay, they got a tattoo. Okay, whatever. They can still be saved. Just like that. This is a different age, a different dispensation, but we serve the same God. And if you pray this prayer of faith with me tonight, you can be saved right where you are by believing what I'm saying to you. And if that's you tonight, I don't know where you are, I don't know what time zone you're in, but if that's you tonight, pray with me and you can be saved tonight. Come on. Say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I want to be saved. 
come into my heart, come into my soul, be the Lord of my life. I believe that Jesus died for my sin. I believe he rose again from the dead with all power in his head. Live in me and I'll serve you for the rest of my life. I denounce the world and I make Jesus Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit to come over you and that it would reside inside of you, walk with you, live in you. And he belongs to you and you belong to him. That's my prayer for you in Jesus' name. Listen, if you want to give tonight, we have different platforms that you can give on tonight. I want you to give tonight. If you're in the, you want to give to our Flint Church, the cash app is on the screen. It's dollar sign, Flint, C-O-T-H-I. That's the Flint Church. If you want to give to Cash App, I mean, rather to uh, Givelify, you can give to Church of the Harvest International. You see a small picture of me, large picture of the church. You can give there. If you want to give to the Jackson Church, you can give to Dollar Sign New HMJ. That's New Home Ministry Jackson. Right there on the screen, New HMJ. You can give there at Cash App, or you can give on Givelify to New Home Ministries Jackson. Jackson, we got several locations. We got New Orleans and Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge and Hammond. We got Houston sectors, but you make sure you give some Jackson location tonight. And God will bless you for that. If the word of the Lord bless you tonight, and you want to give into the lives of my wife and I, our cash app is on the screen. It's dollar sign Bishop N R Eleven. That's right, Bishop N R Eleven. Galatians chapter six says, "Let him that is taught in the word that you bless the one that teaches you." In in all good things. God will bless you. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. What shall the man sow it? That shall he also reap. Go there and give on one of those platforms tonight. And we thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for joining us. We always do. It is a blessing to be with you tonight. I'm talking about I've enjoyed every moment, every moment of sharing with you tonight. I'm telling you, I, when I tell you I've enjoyed it, I have enjoyed it tonight yes. of just being with you. It's always blessed to be with you. Make sure, I'm going to tell you again, make sure you join us on Monday night, on Tuesday night. Yes. Make sure you join us. Be up in the booth. Hey, listen, if you can get to church, join us at one of those churches. We have plenty of places to worship at. Yes. You join us, and I tell you, God will bless you every time. I'm coming every to a city to near you real soon. I'm coming to a city. And I'm going to get my schedule up to make sure that you can be there with us on one of those platforms. I love you in Jesus' name. Make sure you give now. And so, the word of God bless you tonight. Give. So, thank you, Aunt Tangie. Thank you, uh, Mother Dave. It's good to see you. My brother Joe, Pastor Joe, God bless you tonight, man. Enjoyed having you on with us. Pastor Rodney Williams, thank you, man. Latoya Thomas, God bless you. My son, Pastor Jerry Kelly, Shanita Robinson, that's my cousin. God bless you. And uh, to all of you, Vivian, Vicky, God bless you. Rashonda Townsend, my daughter, God bless you, dear. Uh, uh, Bishop Alphonse Johnson, God bless you, sir. Montoya, my daughter, Montoya, God bless you. All of you that was on this platform and those that were on YouTube, some of you are on YouTube platform, and some of you on Church of the Harvest platform. I couldn't get to all the platforms. So thank you for joining us on all platforms. We love you in Jesus' name. Everybody say, say you are my You all have an amazing night. This was an awesome Bible study, and I love you all. And continue to pray for my father. Yes. Yeah. And my mom. And your mom. You miss nobody. I got you. My family. <laughs> my children. My grandchildren. <laughs> New home ministry. Church of the harvest. Everybody. First, my brother so Joe, he's healing from COVID, bless him, and his ministry, God's the doing something dynamic in his life. God bless you all. I pray you have a most ridiculous week this week. Enjoy the Lord. I'll be in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. I'll be back in uh, Jackson, Mississippi at 3 o'clock. So you should join us on those platforms tonight. I just want to close out with this song tonight. And uh, I pray it bless you real good.